Hey friends, today we are making a cute sign using this metal leopard truck. I'm also doing some hand lettering, so I'll share my tips and tricks with you. Also some inspiration of how I put the wreath together. That's what I use the sign for. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Tracy. I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm, just like today's projects. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started and let me share what and how I made this okay guys one of my favorite things to do is to create signs like this using these adorable metal trucks now I do have uh, the link of where I got the truck in the description box below so what I did is I started out with this a circle sign from the Dollar Tree. I uh, traced it out on this chevron uh, uh, pattern paper. I got that from Hobby Lobby. I cut that out and then I'm just taking my vintage photo distressing ink and going around the edges just to give it some shadowing around the edges. I will also take uh, that same, I'm using a finger dauber. It's just uh, something that fits on my finger. It has a little sponge on the edge so that you can work with it a little bit better. I'm just going around the edge of the uh, sign just to give it some color so it's not that raw edge. And then I will take my fine Sharpie marker and go around the edges of the sign just to give it some doodling. I attach the paper to the sign just using some Mod Podge. I have my uh, roller and my little spatula to kind of smooth things out. These, uh, all of these products that I'm using are in my Amazon store if you would like to check out and have them sent directly to your home. Okay, like I mentioned, this truck is the star of the show. It is from um, a website that I ordered from. I will link to it in the description box below. So I'm sharing here, this is, I want to give my truck some dimension to sit on my sign. I also put just some strips of of uh, styrofoam on the back. I'm showing this with you because this is how I clamp everything together. This is just a little behind the scenes of, uh, you know, stuff that you may not see, but I love those uh, clamps. I get those from uh, Dollar Tree and they are one of my best friends. All right. So I hope that someone finds that helpful. All right. To make this uh, small wooden sign, I'm going to hand letter on. I got these wood blanks from Amazon. They are also linked in my store. I will have it linked in my description box below. And then we are going to uh, do some hand lettering. Now I am not going to speed this up because um, I want to uh, just make sure that everyone understands that it has taken me a, a while to hand letter. Um, it is some God-given talent. I am so grateful that the Lord has given me these talents as well as the patience in order to, I was determined and I wanted to learn how to paint with a paintbrush. And so he has given me the patience. He's given me these skills. And so I want to share them with you. He also is the one that has given me this platform in order to connect with so many um, country like-minded people that love this style of lettering. And so um, I have had questions. Do I have like a cheat sheet or something like that? No, because it just really depends on what letter I am making, depends on how I, you know, make it and that kind of thing. But I have found a free font. It's called Gel Dotica font. I will link to that in the description. I'll share that with you here. It is the closest that I have found um, if you want this style of lettering. Anyway, so I just take a quarter of an inch flat paintbrush and I just take my time and um, just make out my letters. They're not perfect. They're not. And then I just go back and uh, just put happy dots on the ends of each letter. And, uh, you know, they're kind of cattywampus. Wampus. They're not straight. Uh, some of it may, my paint may not be completely um, you know, filled in the letter. So I just, you know, may go back and clean up as I go along. And, uh, 
you know, that's some of the stuff that I cut out in my videos, but there's so many people that want to learn how to paint. And I just want to be an encouragement to you that with the Lord's help and just by practicing and, you know, giving those patients, uh, you can do it too. Sometimes I go back and add a bit of highlight or shadowing to my letters. Now I am not going to claim that this is the correct way to shadow. This is just what works for me and what I have found, like I said, that just kind of works for me. So I just take a liner brush and usually if I do black paint and then I go back over it and I do some, um, shadowing or layering, you know, whatever one chooses to calls it. And just with my liner brush, I just go back and just do some lettering and go into the letters. You know, sometimes the E's kind of, um, you know, those that make the, like the E and the C and, you know, D's and all that, they kind of, kind of puzzle me sometimes. I'm like, eh, maybe I shouldn't have did that there, but I just kind of go with that. And uh, whatever I'm feeling for the day, and uh, if I don't like it, I can just take my paint and go back over it. Now, like I had mentioned, I'm not speeding this up. Um, this is in real time when I am doing this. So this, it takes me quite a while to hand letter. Uh, I don't want to ever, uh, you know, make anyone feel that you can't do it because in my videos, I have, you know, like I, I speed up the videos just a little bit so that, you know, uh, the ones that don't care about this, that they won't get bored or that kind of thing. But I have been getting a lot of questions about my hand lettering and my painting. So that's why I am sharing this in real time. And as you can see, I can see, you know, that E, I'm going to have to go back and clean that up. And so I just want to encourage you that you're going to make mistakes. Things happen. No matter how long you've been painting, something's going to happen. Just go back and clean it up. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, once I get all of this done, I kind of like have my little system that I do. I going ahead and lettering this and then I'll go back and clean it up. What I mean by cleaning up is that I will go back with my black and anywhere that may I've got, I got my white a little too uh, over the line or a little too thick. I'll take some black or whichever color I'm using and I'll just go back and kind of clean up the letters just to make them where it doesn't look um, so like, you know, like. I didn't mean to do that. Like I like messed up kind of thing. And so I'm sharing this with you just to say that even as long as I've been painting, things like this still happen. And so I always have to go back and I have to clean up my letters. Um, I sometimes I have to repaint it. I have to do a whole nother one because um, I've like, I got my letter. I didn't space them out correctly. And so um, I end up having to redo the whole sign. 
Okay, so then now for my sign, um, what I'm going to do is um, also do some extra doodling and uh, just take my black Sharpie marker, just go around the edges and just kind of, you know, doodling it and giving it just some, uh, just some outline. I like that for my projects. I think that it just kind of, the beauty is in the details. Y'all will hear me say that all the time. It's just always the beauty is in the details. Some Sometimes and then I will go around uh, each of the letters just to give it additional doodling and uh, just cuteness. And so that's another thing that I like to do. Now the fun part to decorate the back of my truck. I'm using these small miniature pumpkins that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And uh, the orange was a bit too orange. So I just took just some uh, white paint and my brush and just kind of dry brushed the uh orange pumpkins because I wanted to I didn't want them to be so bright and so then I just cut off you know I just cut off the little stem and that's why I put the styrofoam in the back of the truck so that I would have something to for my stuff to stick into I covered it with some excelsior some fine excelsior I like to get that at Joanne's craft store and so then I will just begin inserting my pumpkins into that styrofoam into the back of the truck now, um, once I get to the part where I want to insert some greenery, this is my favorite greenery and this is my last strand. I don't know where I got this from. I'm going to have to be on the lookout for next season because I'm definitely going to want to use this again. Um, I'm also putting some of these miniature sunflowers from the Dollar Tree in the bed of the truck just to give it that pop of color. And I just love the way all of this turned out. I just kind of space them out just like that and uh, everything just looks so cute. So I just glued everything down with some E6000 and um, uh, a combination of hot glue at, with my tumbling tower blocks and it just looks adorable. All right, these are the ribbons that I'm using in this wreath. I'll go through um, once I, you know, a little bit in a bit, I will tell you where they're from. Okay, I like to cut the two and a half at 13 inches and the one and a half at 12 inches because I like um, that the uh, one and a half inch is just a little bit shorter. And so the two and a half inch is what I cut at 13 inches. I dovetail all of those with the exception of the uh, window pane ribbon and the one and a half inch I cut at 12 inches. All right, so I take the extra step to put my uh, little bundles together. So I'm using this uh, the leopard I a ribbon is from Hobby Lobby. That brown is from Sam's. And like I said, I cut those at 13 inches and then 12 inches. And so then the next bundle I have um, are this is I'm just showing this is how I do it. I just lay them out and kind of, um, you know, streamline this just I, this just makes I keep all of my rib ribbon bundles together because I'm trying to move pretty fast and I'm like what was I going to put with what so this kind of helps my bundles stay together and so then I can move pretty fast when I go t through my wreath and so these two and a half um, are uh, let's see the big dot are is from um, craft outlet the leopard is from Michaels the window pane is from Hobby Lobby um, yes I just have all the stores here and uh, so anyway I like to put three of these together I use my tiny attacher my little bitty stapler that puts a tiny staple in there and so the reason I'm showing this to you is because I had get comments to say can I use a regular staple absolutely but I like to use it because when it get when I gather it together 
I can just put it in my wreath and I don't feel the staple in there at all. So I'm just kind of sharing these are what the bundles look like. So then I'm going to move on to the next one. This is the next bundle. I have um, this brown and white check came from Craft Outlet as well as that one and a half inch uh, white and tan stripe. And the other one, the brown with the stitching on the edges is what I really wanted to use, but I didn't have enough. That ribbon came from Hobby Lobby. So I'll have to get some next time I go there. And so um, when you don't have enough, you just kind of make do and figure it out. And so these are um, how I, you know, how these little bundles look. And so then I'm just sharing this with you. I get everything ready to go. So that way, when I'm ready to put my ribbon on my wreath, these are the 10 inch mesh that I'm using in this wreath. The way that I have them separated, that is how uh, those are the two combinations that I'm putting together. I am cutting them uh, or I cut them at 12 inches and I cut 24 of each or 12 of, of each set. So a total of 24 bundles on this wreath. And so I just, you know, alternated it uh, just so that I had a little of this and a little of that. All right. I also use some raffi yeah. Uh, to put into my wreath and I like this raffia from Walmart and I just take it and just kind of gather it together I use I either put a knot in it or depending on honestly how I'm feeling for the day I'm just going to be honest and depend on what's available to me um, will depend on if I knot it or if I tie a pipe cleaner to it so I just use like edges or like ends of the pipe cleaners that I cut off from my wreath I just use them to tie off these um, you know just these small bundles. I just uh, insert the into like a tic-tac-toe pattern. I kind of like go, you know, along the path like that, just inserting my ribbon. That's how I like to fold my ribbon and put it into my pipe cleaner. And then I will cut it off. I uh, don't cut it off too, too close to the stem, you know, cause I want to make sure that it bends over and then I will seal it with just a hot dot of hot glue. Sometimes if I want my ribbon to stay, I will just put a dot of hot glue and, uh, kind of attach it together so that my ribbon will stay in place. And so then, um, with this one that has the three, I just insert that raffia in there as well. I'll twist all that together. I'll cut that off and then, uh, of uh, again, seal it with just a dot of hot glue. I'll continue to do this process all the way around the wreath. To attach my signs to my wreaths, I like to use these uh, cable ties. They are in my Amazon store if you're interested. And this is when my signs do not have uh, holes in it. Uh, for me to attach it to the wreath. Anyway, I just glue them to the back of the sign. I like to use a combination of hot glue as well as E6000 just to give it an, an extra bond. And so then now I'm going to add some white pumpkins. That pack of pumpkins came from nowhere else but Hobby Lobby. And uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just using my paper piercer and I am piercing a small hole in the bottom of the pumpkin or the gore and just dipping it in my uh, Fabri-Tac glue. It's a permanent hold as well. And just dipping it, in, you know, and sticking it into the pumpkin so that it will dry and be secure. And so then I just make sure and glue, um, make sure that all of my uh, pumpkins and gourds are glued around the wreath. And I just love the way that this turned out. And I hope that you did too. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this process 
of how I created the truck, uh, decorated the truck, how I hand lettered the sign, how I made the sign, how I, uh, you know, my kind of my thought process of how I do my wreaths anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my channel for more crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm. Take care. Y'all have a great day and God bless. Mm -hmm.